Hello everyone, uh, this is David Peace from Experience Lights, and today we're going to be going over the uh, version 1.1 firmware release updates for the Genius Pixel controllers, uh, as well as the Genius uh, Long Range controller. So I've already loaded the firmware update on here. Um, there is some various bug fixes, but we're not going to go over those. Um, we're just going to go over some of the new features that you might see in the new version. Uh, the first thing to note is uh, we have this new bar up at the top, which shows the IP address um, of the controller that you're currently accessing, as well as the uh, friendly name or the name of the controller. Now, this is going to be something that is pushed back from Xlights in a future update. Scott is working on that right now. Um, but right now, if you need to update this manually, you can do so by just clicking on it um, and editing that. Um, directly through the web interface. Uh, that field um, is mobile friendly as well. So, and it will follow you as you scroll. So no matter where you are in the web app, you will always see the IP address as well as the name of the controller you're currently accessing. And uh, we um, are also seeing um, an update here that shows uh, a minify or minimalistic view of the outputs screen for mobile. So it basically hides a bunch of columns and just kind of gives you some simple access to the outputs with the name and the count, just so it's easy to access um, on your mobile phone. We're uh, kind of taking out all of the other fields just uh, for simplicity. So you'll also notice at the bottom of the output screen is a new summary, which shows you the total number of pixels that are defined on outputs. So it will go through and add up um, all of the uh, pixels that are defined on every port. And that, um, as you can see here, is updating in real time. Uh, so if I update this to 150, every port has 150. So it's saying, hey, the largest output is output one. Um, they're all equal. If I increase this to 151, now you can see output 23 has the most pixels at 151. And uh, you might not have seen this. This was in there before. Um, but uh, it also calculates the best possible frame rate you can get based on the longest um, number of pixels that you have on a specific output. So as you guys might know, um, you know, if you want to max out at uh, 800 pixels per string, that'll get you uh, 40 frames per second. Um, if you wanted to double that and go to 1600, you get 20 frames a second. And the, the best possible frame rate is always determined based on the longest string um, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the longest output that is defined on your controller. So in this case, uh, the frames per second is being set by output number 23. Um, uh, you can do uh, as, as, as uh, large a number as you'd like here, but again, as you increase these numbers, uh, you're sacrificing your, your frames per second. So um, we did do a test at one point of uh, 10,000 uh, pixels on an output and yeah, we were getting like two, <laughs> two, two frames, three frames per second. Um, you will notice we, we, we capped this to 10,000 practically. This is, you know, the, the, the amount of pixels per port uh, practically at this, at this level is, is not, um, you're not going to want to go this high. Obviously this frame rate is not conducive to a good anime, good, good animation. So, um, but, uh, you know, if you wanted to throw this into, you know, Tom Bet George mode, which, uh, you know, Tom Bet George loves 100 frames a second. I'm actually not sure what the number is. So 380. Uh, there, 330. So if you have uh, 330 pixels or less per output, um, assuming your show player can actually send out data at 100 frames a second, then you can get uh, hey, in ta Tom Bad George mode. Um, so uh, that is just an estimate. Again, that's what it says down here, rough estimate, and it will vary depending on the actual frame rate being sent by your show player, but that's the theoretical frame rate um, that it could allow. Uh, another change um, on the user interface here is uh, this cog um, up here on the top right. And uh, that'll allow you to configure column visibility. Now this is a, um, a more advanced feature. This isn't something that we want like a new person to use because it will hide things and potentially make things confusing. But um, if you're like me, uh, these 
um, all of these columns showing all of the time is a lot of information. And uh, if you're also like me, for instance, I don't ever use nulls. I don't ever use reverse. Brightness is typically always the same. I typically never use gamma. Um, same thing for type. It's always going to be RGB. So these things just like, yeah, it's great to have that information there. But me as an advanced user, if I know like, hey, I'm never going to actually uh, need to worry about these because they're just things that I don't deal with. Uh, I can actually go ahead and save these and um, it'll remove those columns, remove the visual noise and uh, just kind of simplify that interface for me. So whenever I come back, it'll just be a, a simpler interface. Now that does not, and you can see that there's a warning here, that doesn't remove the information. Um, so, you know, if I'm pushing from X lights and I'm pushing a certain amount of nulls, start nulls or end nulls, whether those columns are visible or not, they're still getting set. So that's why we say we really don't advise hiding columns unless you really know what you're doing. Um, it is a bit more advanced feature. What could happen is you hide the column, you push from X lights and it changes a null value or reverse or brightness or something you're like, what's going on? Why is it behaving this way? And you forget that you've hidden information that is actually changing um, that output. So only do this if you actually know what you're doing and you understand the ramifications of that because that could end up being something that uh, is confusing for you in the future. All right. Next we have, um, you also notice that um, there was test mode here on the outputs page before. It is now its own page, um, the testing page here. And we really wanted to make this um, as simple as possible. So um, the uh, first thing you'll note is we have added a lot more uh, test patterns than we had before. So we have, um, you know, the, the, the rainbow is the default one, which is new. Um, it is on our uh, Genius receivers as well, which we think is really beautiful, kind of cycles on a pattern, on a chasing pattern um, through the different rainbow colors. Uh, color cycle and these twinkles, these were what were on the controller before, but then we have these, these new ones here, uh, incandescent shimmer, which basically sets it to look as close to an incandescent as possible um, with some like twinkle in between. Uh, we have a chase pattern, which is basically just chasing RGBW values down the path. Uh, meteors, which is basically like shooting colors. Um, 50 pixel markers. So this is going to uh, separate out um, pixels in groups of red, green, and blue. But then also every 50 pixels, it will light up a white pixel. So it allows you to very easily kind of count things out and it, and it will go as far as it needs to there. And then we also have uh, output identification, which will uh, light up a number of pixels per output. So you know which output you are currently running on. So if it, you are hooked into port one, for instance, it will light up one pixel. If you're on a long range controller and you're in port you know, 24, it'll light up 24 pixels. Um, so it just gives you a, uh, a simple way to see which port you are currently, um, the, the pixels are physically connected to. Um, and uh, you can see over here, uh, there is a button to turn on test mode, turn off test mode, uh, and a big button, especially for mobile, this is really nice. Um, we also have uh, big hit areas for, uh, hit areas meaning uh, big buttons to press for each of the outputs. And you'll notice on the right, it gives additional information on that output. Um, so uh, right now we're kind of in a default setup, so things are a little bit, um, it, uninteresting, everything's kind of set to 150. Uh, you can see here I, I changed the output 23 to 330 pixels. Um, if there is only one virtual string on an output, it's not going to you know, show the virtual string underneath, it's just gonna show the output itself. Um, so let's do a little test here just to kind of show what we're talking about. So if I change this to tree one um, on output one, and I go back to testing, you can see here output one is tree one. It has 150 pixels, brightness 30. If I go and change this to a gamma 2.5 and I do a reverse, and I add some nulls, the, this information is gonna show up in um, uh, on this line as well. So you can see here it's 150 pixels, gamma is 2.5, brightness is 30%. It is reversed and it has four start nulls. So you should be able to see kind of the relevant information here. Um, and then you can, you know, just tap it to turn it on or off. If you want that to be tested, uh, it will just uh, put out black if you have that unchecked. Um, if these are not changed, then they won't show up and also remove some vertical um, visual cl clutter there. 
Um, and if you have a, an unused port, say you have zero pixels um, defined on a specific output, when you go to testing, you will see here that it says unused because there's no pixels on that. And you can actually check hide unused outputs from the list, again, removing visual noise. If you have something that's like a 40 output controller and you have lots of virtual strings, but you know tons of them aren't being used, um, this is actually really nice because it will just remove them from the list so you don't even see it. Um, we also have the ability to um, filter, live filter. So if we had a bunch of mini trees and they were just hooked up into different ports here, like so. We'll do that. Um, and we go to testing, you can see here tree zero, tree one, two, two, three, tree three, but I just want to just wanted to see those. I can go through here and um, uncheck everything and just type in tree and it'll just show the tree outputs or whatever ma match the pattern that I'm typing. So I can you know, check those um, and test something very quickly without, again, everything else in the list as well. Uh, handy little feature there. Um, yeah, so uh, you can also toggle an entire long range port. So if you are on the long range controller, there would be several of these for each of the long range ports um, and groups them together. If you have more than one virtual string on an output, it will then um, uh, add uh, additional children. Otherwise it'll just stay at the output level. So if I come back here, you can see output 23 has Two virtual strings now and I can just do that output by itself or the virtual strings independently. So when I check these, um, most people are going to have all, but if you wanted to test just an individual string, you could just check the individual output or the individual string or the individual long range port that you want to test and the test pattern will only go on the checked items on the list. All right. Um, Next thing is um, is the OLED. So uh, as you can see here, there is a QR code that is cycling um, on and off every seven seconds. Um, so this allows you to connect to the mobile hotspot uh, quicker and easier. Um, so instead of having to go to the Wi-Fi settings on your phone, finding the Wi-Fi hotspot, entering in the password, hitting connect, all that stuff, that QR code will do all that for you and automatically connect to that Wi-Fi hotspot. And then all you have to do is uh, connect to the IP address that it shows on the OLED once you have connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, typically that's 192.168.4.1. Um, I think that's always what it's set to. I don't think I've actually ever seen it be something different. So when you connect to that Wi-Fi hotspot, you pull that um, IP address in your mobile web browser and uh, you'll have the interface up on your phone that you can make some changes if you need to. Uh, another change that we made is on the outputs page, when you reset, um, it's going to uh, prompt you now before it was not prompting just to warn you, hey, you know, you're going to be wiping everything out if that's you want. And instead of a default of 50, we changed the default to 150. This was actually requested by a few people. Um, uh, I, Vinny Bittinger was, was a big proponent of this. He, he basically was, he made a pretty good point is, is when you first get a, a, a virgin controller and it hasn't been configured yet and you're just hooking up lights and want to um, run test mode, typically it's more than 50. Uh, we kind of went back and forth on what that number should be and just settled on 150, um, but uh, interested in your feedback on what you think on that. So we just uh, set that to 150. That way when you plug in a new controller, hit that test mode, um, it'll default to 150 pixels rather than 50 on the, on the output. And I believe that is all of the updates. I'm just looking through my list here. Oh, uh, last one, last one here. Uh, this is something that, um, you know, we've been trying to add for a while. We, we hadn't been able to get consistency on it. So we just added it uh, for the DHCP option. But if you are connecting via DHCP and the IP address that is obtained for your controller is obtained from DHCP, meaning it did not fall back to the static IP address, you can use the host name um, in your web browser instead of the IP address. Whoops. Make sure and put HTTP before it. Um, and then you'll be able to access that. It's going to default to Genius and then the last four of your MAC address. Um, so that way it maintains uniqueness. Uh, you can see here if I uncheck DHCP, that goes away. Uh, we have do not have the host name working for uh, static IPs just yet. 
but uh, that is something that will be coming. Um, so right now the host name does work, but only if the DHCP um, acquired the IP address. And that is it. Um, we did, like I said, we did fix other bugs in this build um, specifically. Um, you know, if there was a start channel that was defined and it was, um, I had a start channel that was greater or less than the uh, start channel that was defined on the controller, you know, it would show in red, showing that there was an error, but then when you go into test mode, it wouldn't work. Um, that's been resolved. Uh, there was issues with like brightness, gamma and color order, some pushes from X lights where, you know, the value in X lights didn't match what the controller had. There would be um, uh, error cases there. So we've made that more resilient. Um, and yeah, so just various other bug fixes as well, but uh, very excited to get this update out. Uh, this is mid season. Um, this is, you know, December 20th at the time of recording this video. So if you, you know, presumably you have your light show up and running by now, uh, this isn't something we'd recommend you go and update the firmware on for a live running show because we don't want you to break things that are working just fine. Um, if there is something that reg regressed or caused an issue, that's not something you want to introduce at this point in the show. So, uh, but if you do have any feedback, any questions, please let us know and uh, hope you all are having a great season. Merry Christmas.